London 2012 was set up to be the games that transformed the lives of all disabled people. And I said at the time, I thought that was a relatively unrealistic expectation of a sporting event. We knew that the Paralympic Games had the way, uh, had an opportunity to transform the lives of people with disabilities who are athletes, but being able to translate that into a social environment was always going to be a challenge. And what we found after those games was that so many people assumed that everyone with a disability was going to be on some kind of athletic trajectory. And that doesn't happen with an able-bodied person, so why should it in a disabled community? So I think there were some unrealistic expectations, but I also think that it did pave the way for some of the discussions that we're having today. And it's also been able to allow us to kind of highlight the challenges that people face um, and allow us to continue those discussions. Um, there's still a huge amount of work that needs to be done to make sure that people with disabilities have the same access to opportunities and are treated in the same way in all sorts of different environments. But that platform that London gave us to have those conversations and hopefully the athletes are able to continue to kind of talk back about what's happened and what's changed, what hasn't changed. And often it's it's helpful to be sort of brutally honest about these things. Um, but as athletes, we do continue to strive and, and push forward to make sure that, you know, inclusion, diversity is always at the forefront uh, and everyone has something to offer. And allowing the conversation to be opened up to more people is a very valuable tool for us all. If I was to offer up three ways in which the business world could utilise the example of the sporting world for integration, I think I would first point towards the way that we organise our competitions. We always make sure that we're replicating or we try to make sure that uh, as close as possible we're re replicating the conditions and the situations regardless of whether or not an athlete has a disability. So in a workplace environment that means providing the opportunities for those people who do need some additional considerations and making sure that you, you, you make those allowances where it's required but obviously those people are still going to be delivering a role and delivering an outcome for for you as a, as a business. So it might be that they need additional uh, support with, within the desk environment, within the actual office environment. It might be that um, you need to uh, make sure that they have access to, to a kitchen that they can get into for their break times. It might mean that they need additional support for getting to and from um, the particular place that you're asking them to work. But when it comes to the role, it's the same role. Uh, and people with disabilities value the fact that they're treated on that um, on that same, they're judged in, in the same way as, as somebody with, without a disability. Um, secondly, I think it's about making sure that the, the trajectory for people is the same. You don't need to lower your sights. If you're a disabled person, you still want to challenge yourself. You still want to have the same ambitions and, and, and make sure that you're included and, and given that opportunity to thrive. Um, and I think thirdly, celebration uh, of success. And we don't always necessarily get this right in sport. We, we often focus on you know, very, very small number of people. But if you can celebrate that success of everybody in the same way and make sure that everybody has that opportunity to feel that their contribution was uh, valued and that they're, they're part of that bigger team, then that's also another way that you can learn from the way that sport might do things. Team is a word that we use in so many different ways and often people see an individual athlete and assume that that team is just them, they're, they're a, a one person team. But actually team doesn't just mean the, the group of people or the, the person that you see executing a particular um, event or, or activity or sporting um, success. It can be the people behind the scenes and the people that make things happen. Now, for me, I'm very much uh, built around loyalty and around people that I can depend on. And I think there's lots of people um, who are like me as well. They like to know that the people that they're working with ha have got an understanding of where you've been, what you've been through, your history as an athlete, your history as a person, um, not just in an athletic sense, but also in a personal sense. Um, since I started uh, my sporting career, I've not actually had that many coaches. I had a coach who coached me through the first four years of my career. And then I had another coach who kind of overlapped with that first four years. 
and then I had a second coach who coached me in the latter half of my swimming career. But since I started cycling, I've been working with the same team. And I think for me, as I've, as I've got older, that's enabled me to have the confidence in those people. Uh, and whilst I am relatively self-coached in the sense that on a day-to-day basis, I decide what I'm doing um, and how I'm going to change things. These people are forming sort of my advisory board, if you like. They advise me as a person and as an athlete on how to make the best out of a situation that I find myself in. And I think it's a really valuable way of working, knowing who your mentors are, who your your sponsors are. When you're not in a room, is there going to be somebody there who can think about whether or not you would be benefiting from something within that space, making sure that you know who to call upon if you need some advice or support, um, and making sure that you know who you can rely on when things are going both well and less well. Um, so I think about building a team around you uh, and knowing who those people are um, it is one of the things that gives you confidence when you're going out there to perform. And I'm certainly incredibly grateful to my team for sticking out with me for such a long time. Cultivating a winning mindset is one of those uh, discussion points that you can get into and it can last for hours. So probably a good one to start on a long train journey or, or, or a flight somewhere. A winning mindset is a, an incredibly individual thing. And I think the way that you start is to think about where you want your end um, product to be, what, what your end ambitions might be, um, and have a variety of them. Because if you meet one of them, then knowing where you're going to go after that is also vitally important. But then working backwards from that and working out the stepping stones and, and how you will um, create your, your pathway towards that ambition, towards that success. Um, obviously, that's a very transactional process. So you need to have the capability um, to have the flexibility in your thought processes and being able to change and not being afraid to think that there might be another way of reaching that particular next step on a journey. Um, so it, it, it is a very individual thing, but I think when you start to talk about what it is that makes the people you're working with tick, what it takes um, for those people to, to move forwards, Think about the things that they really enjoy doing. Think about the things that you perhaps need to work on and, and have a map of the things that you're going to be making changes to. Always only make one change at a time, though, just in case something hasn't worked. You know exactly which thing it didn't work and then you can kind of retrace back. Um, but it's always about moving forward, about growing, whether that's growing physically. Um, sometimes you have to rest in order to grow as well. So being able to stop and pause and having the confidence to take um, a rest. And that is also so vital in a work environment because you'll see people who are not very good at putting down the work tools not very good at stopping when the clock says they should stop oh there's just one more thing or there's just this i need to do uh, and part of a winning mindset is being able to say that's enough for now i haven't reached where i expected to be but that's okay because there is another way i could reach that particular point in this journey uh, and also very importantly making sure that the process that you're building and um, to creating that winning mindset allows for enjoyment because it's supposed to be fun and um, whatever you're doing it has to be something you're passionate about you have that passion there and that you can share that passion and enthusiasm with the people that you're taking with you on that journey and um, so yeah those would be my tips is to make sure that you have you know have that end destination but create that joy in the journey of getting there and that helps nurture and consolidate a, a winning mindset because there is more than one way of winning um, and you just have to find the right way for you as a person.